up, guys? This episode, we're doing a little bit different, and we're talking about just plain old Ruby functionality called memoization. We're doing this on request of a subscriber, which I think is going to turn into a really cool episode if you're not familiar with memoization. If you are, this is pretty standard Ruby stuff, but... Um, it actually is really interesting if you've never used this before. So what we're going to talk about is just this really simple example here um, where you have a model uh, or a class or whatever, and it does some sort of calculation. So for example, in our mailbo mailboxer code, we have a name for the user. And every single time that you call this name method, it has to create a new string in memory and then insert the ID into it, and then finally return that. So this is pretty easy, but it actually has to generate this name every single time that you call this method. This is really fast, so this is not going to provide a performance benefit for us to memoize this, but um, this is an, an example of one of those times where you are doing a calculation that you could actually save for later so that it would be faster. So let's take a look at what this would look like with a memoized version of it. So for example, the memoized version would look like this. You would say instance variable of name and the null equals operator. And here you would say your user ID is your string. Or if you're using first names, last names, you could do first name, last name. Whatever this calculation is on the right side doesn't really matter so long as you save it to an instance variable here. And the trick with this is that you're using an instance variable which, uh, which is actually defaults to nil. And we can actually take a look at how this works um, in IRB inside of our terminal and we can say at name is nil and this is going to work the same way whether we're inside of a class here. Um, or not, this is just a regular instance variable inside Ruby. So when you say name, at name, uh, it returns nil, but if you were to use a regular variable, it would say undefined local variable. Um, but with the instance variables, they don't throw an exception, which is kind of nice, because that allows us to write um, a method like this that's memoized. So when we know that the instance variable is nil, we can say name or you know, first, last. And this is going to say, well, if the name variable is something, return that. Otherwise, return the first, last string. So if we were to say at name equals Chris Oliver, then we could say the same thing, and you're going to get Chris Oliver returned because this short circuits. And it says, okay, there's a response for name, so let's just return that. And that is a like important feature of Ruby that allows us to do something where we say let's reset name to nil so we get nil again and we can use that null equals operator which says do the same thing as we did right here so say well let's check to see if name has a value and we'll return that otherwise we'll set it to a new value so the null equals um, operator is just kind of like an or and an equals combined. So that you could say first, last, and what you're going to get here is you're going to get first and last just like we did this first time. However, the next time you access the at name variable, you're going to get that string. So this is going to do that or the first time, but it's also going to assign the result to the name instance variable. And that means that you can do this calculation on the right side where you you interpolate strings together, um, any sort of work that you wanna do on the right side, you can cache that into a variable and so the next time you call the name method, it just simply returns name if there's a value. And then it doesn't do this complicated um, calculation on the right side. Now for a name, this is kind of whatever. This is very, very fast to interpolate strings, but you will save a little bit of time because Ruby doesn't have to go look up those variables every time, then insert them into a string and then save that and return it. And so that's an introduction into memoization and how it works. You'll see that anytime that you use 
uh, or you see an instance variable and the null equals operator. This is probably the only time you're going to see the null equals operator in most cases. Sometimes you'll see um, this is useful if you're trying to look up a record or create a new one if that uh, original one didn't exist, that type of thing. Um, but most of the time with an instance variable, you're going to use, you're going to see this used for memoization. So where is this actually useful though? So let's say you have a method called uh, spammer question mark, and this actually needs to do a bunch of work to analyze the user's messages in our messaging system and determine if the user is a spammer or not. So this is a case where you probably have to do a bunch of work to do that. You have to go reference all of the messages and it does a ton of work. And so we can simulate that just by saying, let's sleep for five seconds. Let's imagine that that's querying the database and it's running through some algorithms and calculating whether or not the user is uh, you know, probably a spammer or not. And then at the very end, it returns true or false. So let's say this returns true. If we were to do this and save this, let's go back to our terminal and let's go into the Rails console this time and let's say, let's grab that first user and let's say user dot spammer question mark. And you'll notice that this takes a really long time because we have to wait for five seconds before it returns true. And if you're Google and you're building Gmail or something like that, um, or even just building your own method, you don't want to wait five seconds. In order to generate your entire HTML page or do any work, this should probably happen one time where you cache this result. And that is exactly what memoization is great for. So if we we're actually able to memoize this, we would be able to run that slow uh, query a single time and then cache that result to make referencing that faster the next time. So let's check this out. If we were to memoize this, and the trick here is usually you want to name your instance variable very, very similar to the uh, name of the method. Um, because these instance variables are shared throughout the instance, obviously, um, you don't want to overlap uh, any of those names and accidentally override one of the other uh, values. So here we could actually say, let's memoize this and we'll do it as a block. And we'll say, let's do all of this stuff and whatever the return value is, in our case this is true, that return value from the block will be set to the at spammer instance variable and we'll return that. And so then if we go back and we reload our application, we can grab that user again and here we'll say spammer question mark and we'll have to wait our five seconds because this is the first time that it goes through that calculation. We get true, but if we run it again, you'll notice that it instantly returns the true value and that's because it didn't have to run this block again. It's already saved the value of true into the spammer variable and then we don't run this block a second time or a third time or a fourth time or a fifth time. So you can run this method the first time, calculate the result and then just leave it alone and as long as that as long as that value doesn't need to change, then you are safe to continue to cache that. So this is nifty and it's a useful thing anytime you need to do these calculations in a request or in real time and then save them, but you don't wanna save them permanently. If you actually wanted to save this, you would probably save this to the database. But in this case, um, there's a lot of situations where you just wanna cache that variable. So another example of this that you'll probably be familiar with is any time that you wanna to connect to a, um, to a third party API. So for example, if we went to the uh, Twitter gem, Let's look that up and let's take a look at the code for setting up the Twitter client. So normally you end up going with a block of code like this. So you'd put that inside of a method here and you'd say maybe let's call this Twitter and you would, uh, you would create a Twitter client reference um, like this. And obviously you change out your keys and all of that 
But um, every single time that you would want to reference the Twitter client, which might be a bunch of times from the user, um, you actually have to instantiate a new Twitter client. So this is fine, um, but it actually has to do some work to set this up. You have to look up your keys. You have to save those to the config. It has to run this block. There's quite a few different method calls happening behind the scenes just to set up this Twitter client every single time you access Twitter. And so you could say Twitter null equals this new REST client. And that is going to cache this so that you can implement the um, initialization just a single time. And then whenever you want to interact with their Twitter client, you can just access that. It will build it the one time and then it won't create it every single time and you'll be able to cache that and reuse it a bunch. So memoization adds the ability to add a little in-memory cache that you can build with just plain old Ruby code um, and just a single variable that's pretty nifty. It's really, really simple code to implement. Um, and it actually works uh, just as you would imagine regular Ruby code to work. But you're effectively building your own little cache. Um, so this is really nifty. And um, while you're not going to get major, major performance benefits out of it, anytime you do something like this where it takes more than a second or whatever to run a calculation, if you cache that variable in memory, that's going to um, save you time if you reference it multiple times. For example, if you're displaying a user's name 30 or 100 times on a page in a conversation, you show their name for every single message, um, saving this name is actually going to uh, save a handful of milliseconds on that page generation just because you're going to be uh, Otherwise, if you weren't memoizing, you were going to be calculating their full name every single time. So two caveats to be aware of. Number one is that uh, for situations like this, um, memoization only runs the very first time that you access this. So for example, in Rails, you're doing a request and you're instantiating a new user every single page. Um, you're either looking it up or you're creating a new user or updating a, a record or whatever. Every single time you're making a new instance of user. So uh, this will have to run the sleep five every single page view. Um, you can call this method multiple times and it will only sleep for five seconds one time instead of sleeping for five seconds every time you call that method. So in the case like this, um, if you actually want this to store permanently, you're going to want to save that into your database um, or, you know, Redis or some uh, other location. This is, memoization is really useful for stuff that's in memory that you want to cache and reference again quickly in memory. So between page views, memoization isn't going to add any speed improvements, but it will um, every single time you reference a thing more than once. Um, and another situation is that, for example, like this name method, if you did something like this, which chances are you won't, but if you said, let's create a new user, first name is Chris, last name is Oliver, and you said user.name, what you're going to get as your result is Chris Oliver. But if you were to say user.update, first name <clears throat> as John. This time when you call user.name, you're actually going to get the same result as before because this is cached um, in the instance variable. And there's no real good way to update this instance variable, nor should you add a way for that because memoization should only be really used for those things that you want to save permanently. This is a weird case, but... Um, Sometimes you'll use memoizations in places that it shouldn't be. For example, like this, where you want to change the result. Um, memoization is bad for those situations. So don't do that if you're doing things like this. But almost always in Rails with a name, um, you're going to do this stuff in the controller and you'll never call the name method until it's already settled. So you'll, um, you'll be able to memoize and display the name a whole bunch of times in each one of these. In this case, would now be John Oliver. Um, and it would just look like that in your views. So this would be code that you would run in your views, and that would be totally fine. 
if you're mixing those method calls and changing these variables behind the scenes, then you're going to get some odd results or sort of unexpected results. So you just have to be careful that you are memoizing things that should stay permanently that way, at least for the lifetime of the, uh, the instance that you're working on. So uh, keep that stuff in mind. It makes a lot of sense for these that are um, going to be used a bunch of times. So for example, in the background, maybe you have a Twitter sync that happens and you need to make a bunch of API requests to Twitter. Absolutely memoize that because then you can reference this a whole bunch of times, you can make all your API requests and never have to instantiate the Twitter client more than once, which is super useful for, for that. Same probably goes with name. Normally I'll do this with name because um, I'm never doing that odd use case of updating the name after I looked at it. So that is an introduction to memoization. Be aware of the caveats. Uh, it can occasionally cause um, some weird results if you're doing it wrong and you want things to change. Um, don't use memoization for those cases, but in other situations it makes perfect sense and actually can speed up your code quite a lot because you don't have to do all of this work on the right side of the null equals operator. So use this uh, as, as you see fit, try it out, see how it improves your code. This is going to make the biggest impact in things like background jobs, rake tasks or whatever that need to do a lot of sort of somewhat repetitive work that actually reference a method a bunch of times. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you next week.